The Great Step, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Step. In today's program, metallurgist of Bronze Age, glance through soil, nugget of Kazakh steppe. Spring, 1927, a couple got off the train in one of the parts of the endless steppe, which is now called the city of Metallurgis. They looked around the place and moved to the common buildings, where the geological expedition was. The man's name was Kanish Satpaev, and the woman next to him was his wife, Taisia. After one and a half years from the time they arrived, Kanish Satpaev sent a telegram to Moscow to Mikhail Kalinin. The huge copper molding factory of the Karsak Pai Enterprise was launched with the help of soul will and energy of the workers and administrative and technical personnel at the time appointed by the government. Thus, a new page of chronicle of one of the Earth's richest natural resource sites was written. It was a new page, but not the first one. Some complicated negotiations with Moscow experts preceded the appearance of two young mining engineers in the remote steppe. Zafpaev came to the Geological Committee. This organization oversaw the development of deposits during those years, with a proposal to start drilling operations in the remote waterless steppe. His idea was not taken with much enthusiasm. Here is how Medeo Sarsikiev describes the meeting in his book entitled Kanish Zafpaev. One of the prominent specialists of the Geological Committee, Ivan Yagovkin, laughed. So you decided to start drilling. Do you want to try? Do you think that Jiskazgan is a rich deposit? Well, try then. For a young geologist like you, it will be a good lesson with a negative result, so to speak. And next time, you will keep your head down. I will not get in your way. I will give you one machine only because of respect for your youth. Just bear in mind. I have not done so much kindness even to myself during two years which I spent in Jiskazgan. Despite such a cool reception, Satpaev left encouraged and... Now Jiskazgan is the world's largest center of copper mining and the flagship of Kazakhstan for its molding. In 1962, a new mineral was discovered here and it was named after the city of Jiskazgan, Jiskazganit. It is a very rare and insufficiently studied sulfide chemical compound containing rhenium. Kanish Imantayevich, together with his colleagues, discovered dozens of deposits located on the territory of the Great Steppe. Huge metallurgical plants and mines were built, oil rigs were installed, now it has become a part of our history. Kazakhstan Mining and Metallurgical Region is one of the largest Eurasian metallurgical provinces. This area is rich in deposits of polymetallic and copper ores and rare metals. Eight metallurgical centers are allocated on the territory of Kazakhstan to date. To list all deposits of minerals located on the territory of our country, we need a series of programs. Kanish Satpaev once wrote, it is impossible to see our Kazakhstan in one simple glance. Lands of our republic hide natural treasures which match its vast territory. At the time, the researchers found about 600 pre-revolutionary applications for the development of mines and deposits only on the territory of central Kazakhstan. The Great Steppe is a real trove of natural resources. The Zhiskazgan deposit, which is used up to the present day, was being explored by the ancient miners back in the Neolithic. 
and develops continued intermittently on this field up to the 17th century. So let's try to go back to history, to the time when metal was discovered and used for the first time. The whole epoch in the development of mankind was named after the alloy of this metal. Let's move to the period between stone and metal age. About 6,000 years ago, everything that people used, shovels and hoes, axes and unsophisticated weapons and household items, everything was made of stone, which were heavy and complicated in process. Sometimes these items were made of animals' bones and they were fragile and short-lived. Mankind was observant, but among people there were some persons who were more observant, who were interested in the solid earth, in natural resources. Today we call them geologists. People selected appropriate stone and flakes for arrows, axes and hammers. And of course they found not only on the stones, but also the natural rocks. The scientist Marat Simbi believes that the exploration of metal did not happen in one day. Mankind did not shout, oh, here is metal. It is very needed in the household. People have accumulated experience and knowledge over the centuries. They observed and maybe made some experiments. People used stones which contained copper for domestic purposes. They constructed fireplaces, built some constructions. Perhaps when coal and wood burned up at the fireplace, stones were warmed up and copper started smelting. And people noticed that some strange transformation was taking place. Stone turns to some heavy ingot, copper, red ingot. So the question, how people discovered metal, remains unanswered. However, over time, people sorted out how to use this unusual substance. Copper was the first metal that mankind discovered. It was about 10,000 years ago. And the oldest metal items date back to the end of the 9th to the 6th millennium BC. It was in southeastern Anatolia, the Middle East. Archaeologists believe that the vast Eurasian metallurgical province started its establishment at the Bronze Age. Nowadays, it compromises a great expanse of territory. It stretches from the Dnieper River in the west to the Yenisei River in the east, from the Taiga regions in the north to the pre-Caucasus and the deserts of Central Asia in the south. It is a huge territory where numerous pockets of metal production existed. The Russian academician Alexander Fursman wrote Excellent powers of observations of a natural scientist and a huge baggage of experience are needed in the search for minerals. And Kanish Satpayev had these qualities. Being a student, Kanish Imantayevich noticed that the Greek scientists Herodotus and Strabo pointed out the nomadic tribes Masagite and Saka lived to the north and the east of the Aral Sea. Their lands were rich with copper and gold. Their armament, spears, arrows, and axes were made of copper. He understood that the lands that lie beyond the Aral Sea is the territory of modern Kazakhstan, in particular, Ulital, Zhizkazgan region. And archaeological studies confirm this. In ancient times, almost all these deposits were actively used by the miners. And there were numerous settlements of metallurgists. It was possible to investigate only some of them. There are settlements of Melokuduk, Krestovozdinskaya, Zlataust, Ainakol, and others. Krestovozdvizhenskaya, Zlataust, Ainakol, and others. Unfortunately, settlements of miners near Zhizkazgan were destroyed in the result of subsequent developments. But scientists managed to explore a similar city of masters near Bozhakol. The artifacts which were found there were amazing. These are stone hammers, pestles, pickaxes, hoes, graders, round stirrups, anvils, shovels made of animals' bones and parts of ceramic melting pots. 
не только добыча руды, но и... Not only mining industry, but also copper smelting was developed here. Some parts of copper smelting furnaces, remains of some things that indicated existence of foundry, were found during expeditions. This confirms the fact that ore was mined here not only as raw material and sent to Siberia, north and west, but also smelting industry was developed. Smelting is a very labor-intensive process, and here the steppe casters were masters of their job. So-called remnants of ancient smelters' workplaces were discovered on the territory of Zhizkazgan, Taldisai, and Saryarka regions. Copper smelting units are pits with a depth of one and a half to two meters in the ground with spiral air ducts on the walls. Their complex constructions made of clay. Scientists even did experiments on these units and understood there was a complicated multi-step process. This was an achievement and innovation. And this discovery belongs to the metallurgist of Kazakhstan. Such copper smelting units have not been found on the territory of Eurasia except the territory of Kazakhstan so far. Ancient people managed to carry out such constructions and smelting processes without physics or chemistry. Just imagine the level of knowledge of ancient people. They reached everything gradually, hence the experience was colossal. Well, when something went wrong, they turned to the gods. Numerous ceremonies accompanied the metallurgical industry. At the settlement of Taldisai in Atasu region, animal carcasses were placed near the chimneys. Next to these carcasses, two human skeletons were found. This metallurgical process was so complicated, incomprehensible and important that nothing was spared. Kanish Satpayev knew perfectly that ancient metallurgists were not simply mining copper, but were able to process and smelt it. He did not just listen to local Aksakals or elder people, but also heard and understood them. In 1927, Rahmet Japasbayev, a local of the 10th Aul of Karsakpai district, told the geologist, Being little boys, we used to find a lot of copper arrows in the sands of Zhitikonir desert, not far from our winter camps. They were in good state and were not covered with rust. Sometimes we found copper daggers. Skillfully made household and sacrificial utensils also were found in these parts of the steppe. The figure of the Argali on the bronze cauldron, found in the middle of the 20th century near the city of Almaty, was made with a high level of subtlety. This is approximately the 6th it dates back to the 6th to the 5th centuries BC. It is not made from pieces, from elements. This thing is smelted of a single metal ingot, and here is bronze cast. During those days, this was a remarkable technical achievement. First, they make this figure from wax, then the wax figure is covered with clay. Two holes are left from the top and bottom parts to enable wax remnants to evaporate. When a metal is poured through this hole into the form, the wax form melts. And instead of this wax form, it is filled with metal, bronze, gold, silver, etc. This is unmatched workmanship. Indeed, ancient metallurgists knew such methods of metal processing as forging and minting, casting and embossing. And it is very strange that the profession of the blacksmith was not prestigious among the locals of the Great Steppe. In any case, in the Middle Ages, it wasn't. And there are certain reasons for this. This work is very complicated. The miners and producers of these metallurgical products were on the same level. And they were a low social group. But the miners continued to work hard and process the rocks containing copper, which were almost on the surface of the lands. Obviously, their number has decreased over time, and people needed more and more metal. The tips of spades, arrows, maces, and asinaces, short swords, were in great demand, not to mention the need of copper dishes. 
есть замечательный транспорт, который покоряет огромные расстояния, да? Вот. There was transport that could overcome huge distances. There were products, overabundance of products, looking at archaeological research. Археологическим исследованием. Так они же не did not eat it. It was just exported to other countries. В другие страны. And later the moment came when new deposits of copper had to be found. But how should it be found? What are the signs of discovering a new deposit in this step? Man drew attention to the surrounding environment, to nature. Poor vegetation indicated thin, fertile layer. The color of water and stones, its texture and structure indicated the existence of copper ore. Figuratively speaking, the descendants of the ancient nomads adopted the ability to see through the thickness of soil and feel natural resource. Kanish Satpayev was proving to scientists in Moscow that there should be deposits of copper ore near Zhizkazgan. These scientists told that the Russian merchants and the British researchers tried to find copper there. The merchants had guides from the locals and the researchers had the best tools. The first one soon gave up finding copper, but the geologists of the foggy Albion came to the conclusion that the deposits of copper ore are huge here. And on November 10th, 1914, a big train consisting of 278 wagons left the station of Jusali. This train was loaded with all necessary tools and materials to build factory and mines here, but they did not manage to fulfill their idea. The revolution started. This fact convinced the young geologist once again he was right. The deposit must be developed and processed. And he was not mistaken. By the way, Kanish Imantayevich not only could determine the place where it is necessary to search the deposit, but also made very accurate calculations of the dimensions of the underground deposit. So his calculation of copper ore reserves in Jizkazgan made in the pre-war years was confirmed in 1961 by the most sophisticated computer technology. There is an earlier example of the geologist's sense we're talking about the famous Kazakh ruler of the 19th century, diplomat, who is she and Dombra player, Tatimbet. When Tatimbet stayed in any village after drinking water there, he used to say, there is gold in this village. He could define what kinds of materials were underground by tasting the water. He was the first Kazakh who discovered the golden mine. In the summer of 1856, B, or ruler, Tatimbet Kazankapov applied for permission to develop gold deposits in the Kyrgyz steppe. And soon, Russian authorities provided this permission. By the way, the gold mining enterprise of the Tundik River, where a century and a half ago, Tatimbet found gold, still exists. And here it should be emphasized that people who lived in the Great Steppe also used gold from ancient times. A short period of time, people understood that this metal is completely useless for everyday life and for making weapons. They commended its brilliance and began to melt jewelry, first very simple ones, then more and more beautiful and complicated ones. The craftsmanship of the Saka jewelers earns admiration. In the 20th century, in the in the middle of the 20th century, a treasure trove was found in the mountains near the Kargali cloth factory. The most interesting and brightest part of it is a diadem, as they called. Perhaps it is a strip that decorated a headdress. Several amazing characters dressed in some strange clothes are shown on this diadem. And they are sitting on amazing animals. One is sitting on a dragon, the other on a fantastic animal. The third one is riding a mountain goat. Such a delicate work made scientists think about who is the author of this sample of jewelry art. Alexander Burstam suggested that it is a work of local jewelers. Later, scientists came up with other options. How did this item get to the Almaty region? I know two versions. The first version, generally, it has a Chinese origin. My version is that this is the thing made by local masters under the influence of Chinese samples. And there is no other option.
This finding once again confirms that the ancestors of nomads were not only handymen, they used to make magnificent items of precious metals, household items, copper weapons, but also actively promoted their goods on the territory of Eurasia. During the Middle Ages, the Bronze Age, and in the era of the Saka people, more than one million tons of copper ores were mined from ancient villages and industrial centers of Jizkazgan, Utau, and Jizdi. Even today, the volume of only Kin Kazgan deposit has very impressive scale. It was calculated that in ancient times, in total, there were up to 5,000 tons of copper, including the mined copper. Can you imagine such huge volume of copper and copper ore? Of course, local tribes could not use this volume themselves. They did not need it in such high volume. And it is clear that they exported copper and copper ore to other territories. This could be the territory of Western Siberia, Northern Asia, and the Dnieper region. Another confirmation of the constant movement and extensive commercial relations of the tribes of Uli Dala is linguistic feature. For example, in Kazakh, the word copper is jez. In other Turkic languages, it is yes. This Turkic word, jez, can be found in the ancient languages. And if this word, the Turkic word jez, existed in the ancient languages, then, of course, ancient people knew the subject itself. We can say that goods made in Kazakhstan were used in Rome, Greece, and northern areas of China and many other countries. The historian is sure that one of the signs with the help of which miners found abandoned mines was the luggage. People possessed a lot of knowledge. A famous geologist, Medoyev, also pointed out this feature. Here we say that Jizkazgan, Jizkazgan, in translation, it means the place where copper is mined. It is the very name of the area, Ken Kazgan, Ken Gir. All these names are connected with copper. This is the toponymy of this region. Man marked the place where the mineral was found and named places. Memory was preserved in geographical names, legends, and tales. Altinsai and Ulutau, Jizdi and Aktau, Altin Kazgan and Kentau, Taskudik and Millikudik, we can list all names endlessly. By the way, fairy tales that we love and listen to since childhood also reflect very many things. If you get right into the details of Kazakh fairy tale, Er Tostik, particularly, the main character of this fairy tale holds his horse in a copper castle. The famous Kazakh scientist Alki Margulan mastered the thesis, Epic Legends of Kazakh People. After that, Kanish Montaevich advised him to proceed with archaeological research. Subsequently, Alke Khakanovich managed to prove that in ancient times not just settlements were on in the territory of Kazakhstan, but also a number of developed cities. And successive excavations confirmed this. In the years of Soviet Union, the authorities began to change the toponymy and give modern names Georgi Saraevich, argued and asked to leave the ancient toponyms. He used to say these are the signs with the help of which we can search for minerals. When geological expedition is being prepared, first of all, initial toponymy is studied. Kanish Satpayev always remembered the words of his teacher, Professor Mikhail Usov, which he said during one of his lectures. Every deposit has its own history. It has a particular chronicle which is written by many people. Its authors are hundreds of people whose fates have been crossed on this piece of land. They write not only with ink, but sometimes even with blood. 
The Stapin Mountains are rich with natural resources. However, these resources could be found only by those who listen to the stories of their ancestors, thoroughly study history, and look through dusty archives. Only those who really love their native land are able to find natural resources hidden in deposits.